Lorenzo, it's so nice to meet you. Congratulations on This is the Year. I feel like it originally came out at the perfect time while everyone was stuck at home. And especially younger people got to kind of live through the movie in a way, just like your character in the movie. Um, but Josh has to learn how life is not like in the movies. And he comes to the conclusion that it's even better. Um, do you agree with this message? A hundred percent. That that was a big theme of our movie was expectations versus reality. Uh, you know, in the day, in this day and age of how we live on on our phones, on the computer, virtual. Right now, we're doing a virtual Zoom. Um, you kind of get disconnected from reality. So we wanted to show you know these kids that are going, you know, kids that are in high school or outside of high school. Parents can watch the movie. It's a family friendly movie. We wanted to show them that you know, um, that you have to live in reality and the reality is beautiful and that, uh, not everything on in the movies or on your phone is, 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 uh, really what's true, um, on a day-to-day -day basis. So that was a big theme of ours was to really show expectations versus reality. And a big part of it was, you know, parents being able to relate to their kids, um, because it had themes of, uh, very much adult themes and also, um, you know, a lot of throwbacks to John Hughes and a lot of the, a lot of the movies that uh, some of the parents grew up with. So I hope, I hope that makes sense. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of expectations, I love how the movie broke certain stereotypes, like how the two girls didn't end up fighting over your character. I, I love that. And also, I think it's mentioned that boys are allowed to be emotional, which I think is very important. What's, yes. uh, what was your favorite thing about This is the Year? Or what do you hope the viewers will take from it? Absolutely. That was actually a, uh, a big, big part for us with writing the script and, and partnering with a, a great female writer, Sienna Aquilini, who helped uh, craft that narrative, which was, you know, really... Uh, really not showing usually it's in movies it's girls fighting girls and they hate each other and it's this big fight <laughs> uh, but we really wanted to show them connecting um and uh bonding and you know giving them good character arcs because a, a lot of the times it's just the main characters that have complete character arcs it was a, it was very important for us to complete all the characters that are you know supporting cast um, and I think the actresses really appreciated that and felt empowered with um, their acting skills to really do their best to make those character arcs as alive as possible. Um, and yeah, no, I mean, it's great to have emotions with guys and girls, right? And, um, you know, we're all human at the end of the day um, and you can't hide that. Um, so it's, you know, even with our, with our other characters, Donnie and Mikey, they, you know, they may seem tough on the outside, but um, they, they are tough, you know, but they were able to, um, they were able to properly express the right emotions to then come up with the right conclusions. So, yeah, I hope that, hope that clears that question. <laughs> yes. Uh, the characters are big fans of Lovely the Band. What kind of music did you listen to back in the day? Woo, that's a good question. I'm, I'm old now. I'm an old man. Uh, <laughs> uh, wow, what kind of music did I listen to? I mean, as a kid, I, I listened to probably music I shouldn't have been listening to uh, <laughs> I had an older growing up. But no, a, a lot of, um, you know, like for my dad, I grew up with a lot of blues and Eric Clapton and um, a lot of the classics. Um, but then, you know, as I Again, my older brother, a lot of my girl cousins, a lot of Blink-182, uh, pop. <laughs> um, and now, because I'm old, I enjoy classical music. Oh. Yes. Love yes. that. Oh, I'm, I'm slowing down in these years. <laughs> and uh, your character, Josh, is a DJ. What would your yes. DJ name be? What would, in real, in my, in real life? Yes. Okay, my name would be DJ, uh, DJ Z93. <laughs> DJ Z93. 
there's this moment where he tells himself he can't perform in front of so many people. Do you deal with similar situations like this when it comes to acting? Oh yeah, 100%. Again, that, that human, that human, that human aspect, we're all, we're all human. Right. Um, and I think the same, I think the same question could be applied to athletes as well, you know, because they're sure. performing at such a high level uh, in front of thousands and thousands of people. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, yeah, there, there's always that nerve that when you're, when you're on set or when you're auditioning, there's always that nervousness, but I found that if you're really prepared, no matter how terrible you are, how terrible you think you are, it, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, feel, it doesn't look that way. So I, yes, I've been, I've been extremely nervous and have not wanted to do acting in front of certain directors or people, but as long as I prepare, I, I know, I know, I know, I have a somewhat a bit of confidence And I think the same is true with every business as well as with a athletes as well. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And I like how when it comes to this, the movie shows how, how it takes courage to show other people your art, whether it's sports or singing or whatever. That's true. You have to lean, yeah. you have to lean into that. that the Because there's a fear, right? There's a fear of, of some sort of perception, right? So the best thing to do is to lean into it. Lean Absolutely. Into that and that's what courage is. Exactly. And uh, Zoe's boyfriend in the movie, who's played by Greg Salkin, yes. he says at one point that you don't study arts, you live it. Is this something you agree with? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, well, that, yeah, that was a, um, that was a line that's a good question. That's a very good question. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's both. And I think, um, you should study, you know, that I think Molly's response was, well, unless you're, uh, Michelangelo. Or, yes. Uh, I, I, I tend to agree with her. I agree with Molly. I think you have to prepare and study. Um, and then if, if you're rewarded, you can live it just like, you know, actors or athletes or any business, like you can, you can go to, college all you want and learn theory but um you actually then have to apply it so i think it's a both and you have to study it and then you have to live it breathe it eat sleep all that stuff absolutely i was yeah. wondering what it was like for you to play a teenage character because you're an adult right yes i'm very much an adult um <laughs> it's funny because we shot that um when i was 25 Right. So we shot that 2018. Now I'm almost 30. It's, it's Me weird. Me too. <laughs> I, I turned 29 next month. Um, so I, I, it's a weird, yeah, I could still, I, I, yeah, I could still play early 20s, but I, I don't really want, want to play like teenager now. I, I just, I'm in a different phase in my life where I, it, it's just not natural to me. I can, I can do it, but it's just not natural. Um, <laughs> But shoot it, I feel like shooting this movie, there's a, I don't know, I don't know your experience, but I feel like there's been a big age difference between 25 to 30. Oh, yeah. Um, right. I still, when I was, you know, when I shot the movie, I was, you know, I, I still, I think, looked a little younger. I, I, but yeah, I, I uh, <laughs> totally uh, get what you're saying. In the movie, Josh is supposed to write an essay about his high school experience. How was your time in high school? <laughs> uh, my time in high school could have been uh, better. I was very fortunate to go to a good high school, um, but I, I, was, I was young and dumb, as you would say. Um, but I, I, now I am re I'm, I'm more motivated, though, now to relearn the things that I maybe skipped over. Um, and so I, I really do love reading. I love learning. I love going on podcasts. I love, um, history is a big one that I really like. Um, so I, all the things that I messed up on, I am now excited as a, as a, someone, um, later in life to relearn those things. But yeah, no, I had a great high school experience and, um, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> glad it's over. Wouldn't want to do it again. Right. Um, 
and how was your experience shooting this is the year with your brother like was it more of an advantage for you or did he boss you around uh, <laughs> i would say both and he he was able to boss me around more than anyone because we're brothers so he's able to you know just be like dude come on you need to you need to you need to do this fast um, versus with an app you know someone that's not his family who'd be like hey you're doing a good job but but you know <laughs> different approach to that but um no it was awesome david's David's such a great director and, and you can see it in his career. You know, that was his first big, you know, first feature film. And then we just did another movie that our company produced that he directed um, with some really big actors. It was, you know, bigger budget. So um, I think he's really proven himself as a, as a director. Um, and I think just watch his career. It's going to just take off after this next movie as well. I've grown up watching him oh, on good. Wizards, so it's like, yeah. I'm rooting for, for him, for sure. <laughs> awesome. That's so cool to, to still see people from all around the world that know Absolutely. David and, and, and Wizards. It's, it, it still blows my mind. <laughs> In the trailer uh, from This is the Year, Zoe says that she can't remember the last time she had so much fun. How much fun did you guys have while working on the movie every day was so much fun every day um jeff garland uh jeff garland actually gave good advice to david where it says uh uh take what, what do you say take yourself take your take your work seriously but don't take yourself seriously something like that where it basically just right. lightens up the load of, of pressure and stress um but we had so much fun i mean every day because it's a strange business where you meet these people to shoot this movie and you're there for several months and you're there with each other every day, almost like school, right? You're, you're there for a certain amount of months and you see the same person every day and then you don't see them for a long time. So you, you, you start to create this like bond on set with, with the crews, with the, the electrical, with the grips, with the hair and makeup. And you, you, know, you go out on the weekends and hang out and, and, and eat dinner and drink beer and all that fun stuff. Um, so every, we tried to, do, we tried to create a family environment because it was my brother directing, myself acting, a uh, few of our other close partners that were producing it with us. Um, so we really wanted to make it feel like a family environment on set. We had, we had fun, we had fun. I mean, and it doesn't feel like work, that's the goal, right? <laughs> Yes, do what you, yeah, yeah, you get to do what you love and hopefully you can make money while doing that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the movie touches on not living with all the what ifs in life and regretting not going for things. Do you have similar thoughts when it comes to your performances? Like, do you sometimes think, oh, what if I had played this certain scene in a different way? Yes, yes, and yes. Yeah, I mean, I think every actor watches themselves and they're like, oh, I could have done that differently. I could have changed that. But ultimately, you have to, you have to trust in your ability and you have to just, you know, leave it, leave it to God, right? You have to just trust in your ability and uh, know that you gave it your best. Um, I used to really, actually on This Is The Year, I, I, I because I was the, the lead actor and my brother's directing job and you know we were producing it I did feel a lot of pressure to it was it good was it good was it good but that actually was like a lack of confidence in my ability um so I I I do know that I need to be more confident in the near future um but I I, I think every actor can look at their performance and and you know, be like, oh, I could have done it a little different there, a little different there. But that's the beauty of editors. Editors <laughs> can make or break an actor. And we're doing that right, you know, not that we're, you know, we're in the editing process right now. And you can, um, it's amazing the things that you can do to fix a scene that if it's not working, you can edit around it or add music or add sound effects or, you know, voiceovers. Um, so editors are a, a director's best friend. And that's movie magic. Yeah, exactly, exactly. 
what opportunity would you not pass on when it comes to a role? Like what character would you not would say I no not, to? Would I not say no to? Um, that's a good question because I say no a lot. <laughs> uh, I I would love to. I I was in Agents of Shield, which was the, this Marvel universe, um, and I would love to be a part of some sort of like franchise like that or some fun, uh, family friendly um, superhero movie. Like I I would I would have so much fun doing that. Um, I think also you know, fun uh, comedy. I, I like comedy and I, I tend to do more serious stuff. So it'd be, it'd be a, a lot of fun doing a comedy. Um, but yeah, I think, I think a nice superhero movie. Um, I had some good experiences getting really far into some franchises at, on the audition side that I was like, oh, I wish I could have done that. But um, I, I still got that itch to, to be a part of something like that. Right. That's so yeah. interesting because I've asked this question a few times now and I think everyone that I asked said a superhero. Oh, That's really? So, yeah. I got so close on uh, Bumblebee. The, the, the... It was down to the me and the kid who got it. The kid that, the current kid that was in it. Um, I met with the director and it was such a, I was like, this is so cool. Transformers, Bumblebee, uh, but didn't get it. <laughs> Same thing with uh, Maze Runner. I almost got a big role in Maze Runner. It's down to me and another kid, and then I didn't get it. So that's why that's the case with actors. <laughs> that, you know, they get they get so close, and then you have to let that go, right? Um, yeah. So that's just the nature of this industry and every business, right? You're you're interviewing for a a, a, a position in a company or something. Exactly. That's, that's life. That's, that's life. life. That's what wine is for. <laughs> but I would for sure love to see you in a superhero movie. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I, I'm rooting for you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, we'll see. Um. So, yeah, I think uh, one last question. What What's next for you? What What are you allowed to tell us? Yeah, yeah. No, no. There, there, we so me and my brother, we have our own company. It's called Novo Media Group. Um which the partners on the, this is the year that financed the movie. There are partners as well in our company. There, uh, Dennis Gallagher, who's the chairman of our company. He helps us with producing and all sorts of things. Um, but we, we, so this, this poster right here, we have a show on Netflix. It's called a tale, dark and grin. Um, we awesome. produced that and sold it to Netflix. Um, we have another show we're developing with them that hasn't been announced, but it's an animation series as well. Um, we, and then the movie we are in post-production on that, that I produced, my brother directed, um, it's called Boys of Summer. It's a throwback 90s movie. Think of E.T. meets Goonies, where um, there's an evil entity on this island in Martha's Vineyard, and this kid wants to go save the day and destroy it. And the only person that believes him is a retired detective played by Mel Gibson. Um, so oh, they wow. team up to go figure out what's going on. Yeah, so that, that movie is starring Mel Gibson, Mason Thames, who is coming out in The Black Phone, the new Blumhouse movie called The Black Phone. Um, he's going to blow up after that movie and just become a, the next Heath Ledger. Um, <laughs> so we're excited about that. Um, and then we, <clears throat> yeah, we're, we're just producing a lot. I, I mean, me and David are have shifted to a lot of behind the screen with him directing and me producing and we have a few other stuff we're doing as well. So, uh, yeah, it, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's looking good the next few months. So we're excited. That sounds awesome. I can't wait to see all of that stuff. Thank you so, so much for your time today. It was lovely speaking with you. I wish you all the best with all of your future projects. And I hope I get to interview you soon face to face. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And have a wonderful night.